Hey, what's up everybody? This is Alex and today we're going to be playing Farmers Against Potatoes Idol and we're going to share some quick tips and tricks. Alright, so first thing first, when you start this game, you're going to start as a farmer. It's one of the six classes and you will want to push this class uh, pr probably around like level 5 or 600. Basically until you can reincarnate for the first time. As much as possible, try to have as many reincarnation levels, but more specifically, you want to have enough reincarnation points. So maybe like 10 of reincarnation points as much as possible so that you can invest into two different upgrades since they cost five each uh yeah that's gonna be really useful to try and do after your first reincarnation you're gonna basically want to swap class to smasher and bring it to levels like 600 700 etc and do the same thing with horror and then always reincarnate in between obviously you want to level up each of your classes to you know more or less the same levels you'll you will feel when you need to to reincarnate again because your xp is going to be slower your progression is going to be slower but also like these three classes are much faster at progressing than at least is these two the free loader is not too too bad each of the classes has a different growth per level in terms of stats and some stats are going to be more important for some than others uh, for example like uh, free loader is very luck and gear oriented so you're going to definitely want to invest into luck nodes as much as possible now that you understand the objectives that we need to go through we're going to talk a little bit more about the gameplays and the, the stuff that you're going to unlock so first of all at the top you can see you have attack speed percent like uh, bar uh, the more you click the more it's gonna speed up your attacks so that's gonna be good to you know at least maintain a good ratio sometimes if you want to maximize your stats you will unlock you know these two first nodes the potatoes are pretty straightforward it's something based on your kills that you're gonna acquire potatoes and then you can invest into each of these nodes some are more like attack hp uh, xp fighting efficiency scrolls earn etc it's basically gonna be uh, pretty exponential and you're gonna unlock more of categories that you're gonna be able to invest in based on your progression then you'll unlock the inventory which is you know somewhat straightforward you will want to equip the best gear possible that you find and you will you know the rarities are pretty common like green blue purple yellow orange and so on eventually you will reach uh, pink after the teal one i think and you basically want to you know have the best stats as much as possible and you also want to have a second set uh, for reincarnation xps that's going to be helpful for you you know once you're going to time to reincarnate you can boost your xp gain a little bit uh, you can also lock items by just holding left click on it and then it's going to help you not salvage them by accident. You can do salvage all whenever you need to. You can actually upgrade your gear and shant your gear with the materials that you acquire from salvaging. So you will want to do that from time to time on the good stuff that you get. And you know, you're going to replace your gear probably every day, but it's still worth it to upgrade here and there. Now for the skulls, uh, it's more about like basically whenever you die or slash uh, when you complete a full run. So beat a hundred wave, beat 200 waves, depending on the difficulty you're on. And then you're going to have a lot of very significant upgrades in this section. Uh, again, you're going to unlock more categories as you progress. One of the most important categories is the potatoes one because you can affect how fast they spawn um, how many spawn at the same time and stuff like that so that's huge on you know progression and it's going to be very important to you know try to balance a little bit how you invest your stuff uh, because if you right now i'm on auto and auto is not that great because it's always going to you know like spend everything at the same time but the thing that is it does is that if there's something really expensive it's going to chain as much as possible and the same thing for the small one but the same speed so basically sometimes you have to manually upgrade some some stuff so that you can kind of catch up and not fall behind on some upgrade so you have to be careful about that now for levels basically the more you kill stuff and you progress the more xp you gain you also have some nodes that are going to increase your your class xp such as these ones which can be useful when you're trying to just catch up a class so there are six classes that, like mentioned earlier each of them have their unique a little bit a different uh, skill tree uh, you can still branch out into the other classes skill tree but some nodes like the class specific nodes are not going to work like, uh, this one for example which is unique to smasher depending on the type of run that you're going to do whether it's like a leveling up fast level run you know you're trying to catch up a class it's going to take one or two hours then you're probably going to want to focus as much as possible on stuff that are going to give you power and class xp uh, just to catch up and then the runs that are a bit longer you're probably going to want to focus uh, more on stuff that boosts your worm acquisition or uh, your confection xp or even uh your reincarnation xp is based if you're doing really long runs like overnight runs for example and then when your run ends well you're gonna get a lot more levels or reincarnation levels which are you know one of the most important thing in the game so also based on the class you're playing some stats might not be as useful like for example on smasher uh, luck, dex, evasion, and everything, ag agility is not very useful. So you can try as much as possible to skip those nodes. Now the next point is you're regarding the areas. Uh, you start, you know, area one one, and you move your way up. Uh, it's always going to be harder. And then uh, you basically want to try and farm on areas that you can clear. 
So you just you know, stay on that farm specifically. And then whenever you feel like you can push pretty far in the next one, you can go there. And then once you're going to reach 2.8 and like uh, wave 50, you're going to unlock the, the cows and the milk and everything. But you're also going to unlock uh, medium mode, medium difficulty rather. He has 200 waves instead of 100, has better gear and also uh, has double the worms drop. So depending on what you're doing, whether like you want gear or worms, then definitely farm on medium. If you just want potatoes and skulls and you want to level up faster, then farming on easy is going to be more useful here. Next, eventually you're going to unlock the worms uh, breeding section, which basically over time you're going to have, you're going to start with like five worms, I think. And then over time they fire, they, you know, they create poop and then you invest that poop into whatever upgrades that you want. And then those upgrades over time kind of farm themselves into percentage of these, of every sections. So for example, these like nearly 20,000 uh, points into attack bonuses, I've created like 66,000% uh, of a bonus there. So, and as you progress, you're going to unlock other, other stuff that you can invest into. And at the bottom, you can choose your increments uh, of how much you want to invest. So for example, you can do it a little bit like this. I personally really like to invest into these two since, you know, they're kind of your bread and butter type of thing. So eventually you're going to unlock uh, like the cows and everything, which is going to take you a few days for sure. And when you do, you're going to need like a thousand worms to buy your first cow. So that will take a little bit of time, but then I've not, I've, I've just unlocked this. So I can't really say a whole lot, but I know it's a huge, it plays a huge part into your progression. Now for the worms, one of the best way to increase your worm count at start is going to be with the challenges that you're going to unlock eventually. Uh, each of the challenges have very, very, very good rewards. Uh, so it's definitely worth doing them for the talent points for the reincarnation points and the permanent worms, worms and everything. At first, you can only do the first four, and you will want to do use the smasher class for these four uh, for challenges since it's going to be easier that way. Uh, you don't necessarily want to rush the challenges as fast as possible when you get them, but you know you might want to farm a little bit more before you do, just so that the challenge itself doesn't take a whole lot, like more than like one or two hours. And the same with the five and six challenges, except that these ones, the fifth one, you're going to need to use the the harvester class because because there's a gimmick where you need to do critical hits and this damage in this in this challenge to do damage. And then the sixth challenge, you're gonna you have to use the range charge since you need to do evades and these two classes are basically good at those things. All right, so there is a walk potato type of mini game in this, in this thing, which gives you basically when you score, you're gonna be able to upgrade some good stuff to perform better in the mini game. But you will also have a section for buffs, basically when you complete the game once, Every time you do it, you're going to have a random buffs. And these buffs have a pretty significant uh, impact on your progression, especially when pushing. So it's definitely something that you're going to need to to work to to play and, and, and upgrade into. And the last level also has some inventory slots and some cool stuff. So now every day you're going to have some quests. I think it's like six quests that you can do that are going to give you some souls. These quests are very easy to do, so you should definitely do them every day. On top of that, you can go into the menu here and you go for a code and then you type daily. And that's a code that you can use every single day that are going to give you some free souls and I think a potion as well. So when you're going to be leveling classes, you do want to try and level them uh, uh, parallel so that you try and keep them all mostly at the same range. It's going to have a, an impact on your talent points. Uh, the Every class level in your account, basically, I think it's every 10 levels or something like that. It gives you, I think, one uh, skill point here. So it's going to be important. Like when I start a fresh run, I currently start with like 200 levels for example so it's really useful to to try and maintain all of your classes as high as possible on top of that you have some useful little menus here that are going to show you your overall stats to gauge basically how much you're ready to progress you have like some help info tab here if you need to read on stuff which is going to be useful and also this tab i really like a whole lot uh basically shows you your overall play time but also like how long you've been on your run Usually if you're doing like a catch up run, uh, one or two hours is pretty, pretty, much, pretty much what you're aiming for. So this run is nearing its end in my case, since I was just catching up my, my smasher. And then you can see your history, the last 15 histories that you did, uh, 15 runs, I mean, that you did and see what level you reached, the time it took and everything. So it's going to be interesting to see the data and compare with other players on the Discord because it's just nice to compete in these type of games. So you will find a description of the video, the both links to the Discord, the Discord of the of the game, but also our Discord if you want to come hang out. And yeah, this game just basically released like a week ago on Steam. It will be launching on Android on the 8th of September. Make sure to check it out. It's going to be a free to play game, by the way. So for those of you guys that want to play it and don't have a whole lot of money to spend on games, then, uh, you know, it's definitely uh, worth a try if you like an idle games. And on top of that, the, the, the cash shop is fairly... Uh, 
gentle. Uh, there's not that much stuff that you can actually buy. Everything is pretty cheap. Uh, so there's not a huge difference between a well and a normal player free to play. All right, guys, thank you for watching the video. I hope the information was useful and I hope that you guys will try the game and uh, I will talk to you guys on this card. Have a good day. Thank you.